Nice to meet you, Joe. Nice um, to meet you. Uh, there are no coincidences in the world. And um, yeah, I have good news. Uh, therefore, I came to the CNU today in order to say that the case um, against the trial against Michelle Lady Renouf is laid down. Mm. There will be no trial anymore. Anymore? Um, no. Laying down a case is not an acquittal, but mm. if the case will be laid down, finally, she's unguilty. So she can tell everybody, I am not guilty of what I was blamed for. <laughs> and uh, this is a great news. It was tricky. Mm. I was using Mm. Uh, the mechanisms uh, of uh, German interstate law mm -hmm. uh, in order it's, it's, it's some kind of yeah we can do it mm. we can do it but we will go through all the instances county and supreme court of Saxonia and even maybe the constitutional court at Karlsruhe mm -hmm. and that's what I said so what do you want what is the aim of defending is mm. it an acquittal nothing more mm. yes and it but maybe it, uh, they said, okay, mm -hmm. could be, the case could, is, uh, is not, it was not a, a safe case for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, meaning in your speech, mm -hmm. own, yeah, own opinion, uh, difficulties of the, the English language taking several idioms in your speech that oh, yeah. in Germany is not, cannot be correctly interpreted. Mm -hmm. yeah, because we, our, our language is another one and um, therefore I think they were not really convinced mm -hmm. that they will bring through it. And uh, maybe they said, okay, if there will be an acquittal to the outer world because mm. we cannot find her guilty and she would have been maybe she would have got an acquittal mm. it would have been good for them in the outer appearance to the world to the public oh a trial mm. with with judge uh, with a judge with a prosecutor with lady michelle with mm. uh, with uh, witnesses and maybe <clears throat> video films and in the end nothing is there and this result has been fixed, in my, according to my point of view, before the trial starts. Mm -hmm. I gave them the chance to lay it down. They didn't. They want the trial. Mm -hmm. And now they, I think they got under pressure, said, okay, better to lay it down mm -hmm. silently, but to risk maybe an acquittal with a loud... Um, publicity, publicity mm -hmm. not only in Germany but in, in, in Great Britain and the whole world because the judge and the prosecutor know how many people are well, very very interested mm -hmm. in their trial yes. and if she would have get, got sentenced in the lowest step of the court they all know will come, it will go one higher to the county court and if the county court would said okay she will be sentenced we will go to the supreme court of the land the federal land of saxonia and even to the constitutional court so this public publicity. again more publicity and more and more. again and again and again yeah maybe it's better 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 to let this this case die silently mm -hmm. if you understand what i mean mm -hmm. yeah. so it was uh, yeah uh, there was for three, two, three, four days this gate was open mm -hmm. and I asked uh, uh, Michelle Lady Renouf, should we go that pass and we talked a lot mm -hmm. about uh, she said I have to, to think it over mm -hmm. for one night and finally we took that way mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for, for her and for all of them is um, as a rest of risk any time. So mm -hmm. it is mm. but it was a good way. Mm. Yeah. 
So I'm, yeah, thank you. It's my job. It's simply my job. <laughs> no, but he, but he also, he also saw the brilliance of Narad is that he saw his the potential of his client. He saw the potential of, of the sort of ingredients of that particular person, <laughs> that particular person whose whose late husband was a prisoner of war in in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the circumstance of, of, of his connection to Hermann Arps, head mm -hmm. of the Deutsche Bank, the fact that in consequence of what he, what, what he had experienced and how he had been treated as a prisoner of war, he then uh, was, was, uh, was awarded the Wedinskreuz, the highest award for a foreigner, and knighted by the Queen for, for his um, work in reconstructing Germany's <laughs> banking system <laughs> after the war. Uh, and though my personally had had I known that at the time, it would have been what they called an impediment to marriage. But I didn't know about <laughs> such things at the time. I didn't know that. But from the court's point of view, it makes it a very within me mm -hmm. is this mm -hmm. curious conundrum mm -hmm. where my late husband uh, uh, was honoured by. The, the current German mm -hmm. situation, not the same government, but the same uh, mm -hmm. circumstance. He, and, uh, and being uh, prisoner of war and a, in Germany. Prisoner, being a prisoner uh -huh. of war, and, and, and in consequence of being a prisoner of war, he, he loved Germany after that. Indeed, Captain Renouf's Bavarian prison guard taught him German via Schiller's poems. As opportunities for learning German go, one wonders, had I myself been sentenced in Dresden, whether any prison guard there nowadays would be so well versed. And thought he was helping Germans by undermining the National Socialism, unfortunately. But uh, nevertheless, it makes... Uh, and of course, our matrimonial home was the former home of Neville Chamberlain, who was at the wartime uh, mm. Prime Minister. And also... At that time. By the way, mm -hmm. Neville Chamberlain should have been given the Nobel Prize okay. of Peace. This London dinner of the Foreign Press Association became an event of worldwide importance. For the guest of honor was the Prime Minister of Great Britain. A war today is fundamentally different from all the wars of the past in as much as its first and its most numerous victims would not be the professional fighters but the civilian population and when the war was over Whoever was the victim, was the victor, he could leave behind a trail of suffering and loss that two generations would not obliterate. Because he and Abbott the Eighth, I think it was Abbott the Eighth, mm -hmm. they um, have held. Is that right? Have held. Held. England out of the war. Yes, yes they tried. They declared the war, but they <laughs> didn't fight the war. And those two people, yeah, oh, together gosh. with uh, the German government and even the French government, the French people didn't want any war. Absolutely. Yeah. So they made a mistake to to, to have a, a bondage to Polonia. Yeah. Would have been better not to have it. Maybe Second World War Two didn't of wouldn't course. have taken place. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, uh, yeah, we all know Winston Churchill and George the th the sixth. It was mm. yeah, were the two other people, and the war began. Yeah. And uh, I I remember that I held a speech in London sometimes six, seven, eight years ago, mm. and uh, I said very clear and often, yeah, Winston Churchill really was a great statement. Mm -hmm. He was a great man for Great Britain, but according to my point of view, he's he has uh, he is responsible for three three hundred and fifty thousand dead British soldiers. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was the one who could stop the war, Absolutely. and he didn't. And not about nazism or the Third Reich or the National Socialism. 
Winston Churchill said in his memories, we fought Germany mm. and not the National Social Jealousy. Regime. Oh. Yeah, Jealousy. This, on my point of view, this mm. medieval, totally silly balance of power policy, mm. Mm. how it was. Mm. And he opened the gate for, okay, it's not respectful and maybe I never will go to the US. And he opened the, uh, the gate for a pathfinder nation like the USA mm. to step into the war. Yeah. Mm. And and the whole of Europe, Europe, the whole of Europe lost the war. Not even Germany. Of course. The whole of Europe, any state and people, well, including Britain, including, including Britain, 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 and, Britain, 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 and, and its colonies. colonies. Yes, oh. and and who the two victors were the communistic Soviet mm. Union and the USA. Exactly. And the cultural, for over hundred years, culturally, Europe lost the war, all of them, until now. And Winston Churchill, not not this king. Uh, mm. I think he was not in it, was not able to 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 do anything. This Winston Churchill had the possibility to stop that war. And he started it. Never mind stopping. Yeah, he it. began <laughs> the fighting. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. And uh, this is. Uh, and all the peace I'm, plans. I'm, I'm, I was born after the war, but is it is aching to look upon history about that. Silly, stupid mistake, mm. and I know out of the historical uh, um, books in Germany, but even from from the world, that there have been one hundred and one tries from Germany to England to bring on peace. Yeah. Yes, and they all said no, no, no. And then they jailed Rudolf Hess, mm -hmm. who had the order to, to bring something <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we will put, put him in prison. If we will allow will allowed to, to, to Rudolf Hess to speak in front mm -hmm. of the parliament or in the government, mm -hmm. he, will, he mm -hmm. will convince yes. the government, the parliament, Stop that war. And yeah. people will hear that there are peace plan, peace proposals. Yeah. Yes. The British never heard that there were peace yes. proposals because yes. Winston Churchill prevented uh, the people from understanding this. But On the 28th of May, Halifax recommended to the War Cabinet that the Italians might be invited to arbitrate a settlement. Churchill realized at once what this meant. Once you talk about terms, you are effectively committed to a ceasefire. And once an armistice was agreed, Churchill's premiership would be finished. This was for me um, some kind of flash, I have to say it now, and even well, for the afterworld maybe. But um, uh, that's what I said in London too. We European people, we should never have any war against one another in the future. We fought one, one another for 500 years, killed millions <laughs> of us all, and not the baddest. Mostly war is the best. A selection of the best. The best. So we, we, we mm. broke us down, we made us weak. Mm -hmm. And that was the final reason that this communistic mm -hmm. regime of the Soviet Union and this pathfinder nation of the USA could rise up as world powers, world mights, as exactly. they were in the last uh, uh, 70 years. By the middle of 1941, Britain had been stripped of all her assets and had become little more than an American mercenary, a status which she was to suffer for the next 40 years. And look at the world now. Is, is it peaceful? No, there were hundreds of wars. <laughs> Immediately. After. Very often. More often the US. Mm -hmm. was involved in any uh, in mm -hmm. such wars mm -hmm. and the Soviet Union too what brought their peace to you did they really end the war until now with Germany no they don't Korea <laughs> Vietnam yes and even Germany yeah mm -hmm. there is no peace contract at all mm -hmm.
okay, the weapons were laid down, the fighting ended, but there was until now, nowadays we have no peace contract. Mm. And, and this therefore in order. Germany, mm. World War II is on. Mm -hmm. It's not really ended, has not really ended now. And this is the problem of the Federal Republic of Germany. <laughs>
pulling uh, jets from German uh, Luft because Jews like here, for example, have been one of the war victors, mm -hmm. selling two or, or they were. Mm -hmm. And um, from the legal point of view, Yugoslavia could have sent without any ad, uh, um, admittance, admittance uh, permittance, mm -hmm. permittance mm -hmm. from the UN could have sent bombers to Germany would have been legal because Germany was part of an offense war. Mm -hmm. But all these cases, all these mm -hmm. files were laid down against the, um, the, the government mm -hmm. uh, of Germany. This is, was the only, uh, the only time <laughs> when Germany <laughs> stepped into a war. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm very, very um, um, I'm looking upon very, very correctly and very clear what German soldiers do at Mali, Africa, in Djibouti, Afghanistan. Um, I'm not really sure if all these so-called peace missions mm -hmm. are real peace missions. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, so, so I would like to have them all back mm -hmm. to Germany. Absolutely. Yeah, we have about mm -hmm. 73 or 75 victims mm -hmm. uh, out of a peace mission. Hmm. So we Germans are very sensitive at the moment uh, if German soldiers go off to a war area mm. because they have blamed us and punished us mm. for having a war mm. with Europe and even the world. Mm. And mm. so I, ca I cannot understand that, uh, that the German government nowadays said we have to, to build up the Bundeswehr the arm, the German army, in order to, to send them out in, in the whole of the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not inspired of that. Mm -hmm. Just the opposite. We mm -hmm. can do that, but mm -hmm. only as a sovereign partner of a bondage. Mm -hmm. But we are not sovereign. We are not. Stop this <laughs> World War II, make a real peace contract with Germany as a whole, give us back the sovereignty, and then we can talk about mm -hmm. German forces in foreign countries to help, but at the moment I, I all found it for illegal. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very sad to get know that more than 70 German soldiers were killed during this uh, so-called peace mission. There have mm -hmm. been families here, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. losing their heads. <laughs> So possibly so. all of this could have been brought out also <laughs> in, the, in, yes. in the trial, because yes. uh, in my speech I had said that significance, the relevance today of Dresden Holocaust, mm -hmm. is that ever since the Allies got away with swindling their way in Nuremberg to, mm -hmm. to say we will judge against uh, Germany, having themselves committed war crimes in deliberately targeting civilians, mm -hmm. that is the whole point. Even, even the, some weeks uh, before. Yes, so the, yes, a, yes, the recent, year, no? yes yeah. a year before. Yes, it's, it's the proximity, the, the memory was it's there. Safe. And the people Incredible. were, mm -hmm. the policy yeah. that I was trying to explain to that lady who said, you British have no right to be here at the commemoration. Ah. I understood yes. why she you said You have no it. right to, no duty to be here in front of the court even. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, you can take your words, but not in front of a trial, mm -hmm. in front of a court. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. because I, I, uh, I understood how she felt. Yeah. But the point is that I could tell her what is in the, the, the documents, mm -hmm. what is in the archive, mm -hmm. what the, they, it's been published by Sykes. I've got the book that I was going to bring to the court by Sykes <laughs> and so on. Uh, and so uh, the significance of Dresden Holocaust, where you're burning alive, that's a Holocaust, not a crema cremation is not the same as Holocaust. Of course. They were cremated, they, they were Holocausted alive. And the significance is, is that all wars ever since mm -hmm. have targeted civilians. Mm -hmm. It's been a policy. Mm -hmm. Moral bombing, they, moral they call bombing. it. Moral, moral bombing. This is it. And this is disgraceful. And, and, and it all began mm -hmm. in Dresden. That was what I was trying to and Hamburg, point out. And Berlin and all the other 60, 60 German beautiful towns cities. cities yeah. 60, it was the plan. Mm -hmm. It was a pre-plan. In a nutshell, Sir Charles Snow disclosed that early in 1942, the exact date it now appears was March the 30th, Professor Lindemann submitted a minute to the War Cabinet 
in which he urged that bombing henceforth should be directed against German working class houses in preference to military objectives which were much more difficult to hit. He claimed that given a total concentration of effort on the production of aircraft suitable for this work, 50% of all the houses in the cities and towns in Germany with over 50,000 inhabitants would be destroyed. Sir Charles declared that the Lindemann plan to initiate terror bombing against Germany was adopted by the British government and put into action with every effort the country could make. This decision of the war cabinet was kept a closely guarded secret from the British public for nearly 20 years until it was unobtrusively revealed in 1961 in a little book entitled Science and Government. Quote, Factories and military objectives had long since been forgotten except in official bulletins. The paper claimed that Given a total concentration of effort on the production and use of aircraft, it would be possible in all the larger German towns, that, that is, those with more than 50,000 inhabitants, to destroy 50% of all houses. End of quotation from C.B. Snow's book. Those Lancaster bombers Absolutely. were designed specifically yeah. to come behind enemy lines. Mm -hmm. Dunny, which which uh, was uh, intending to kill civilians. And that is the significance for us today of Dresden. Yes. Not just that it was a dreadful thing, but today that is the policy. It's true, it's the first time. Yes, As you know, there was preparation in, in, in the deserts of the USA. They built up German-like city streets. Per, uh, per uh, water into the air in order to 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 make this humid climate yeah, yeah. in Germany mm -hmm. and then try they tried the, those bombs in test areas before they came to Germany mm -hmm. so it was not a, a plan a military plan yeah we have to do it now no they prepared they tried out Mm -hmm. how to bring firestorms into the street to make a they holocaust they tested it mm. and this was brought in, in one of the most famous German magazines the Spiegel, mm. the mirror mm -hmm. yeah. it was written mm. they made a report about this built up, artificially built up cities and they brought in their uh, German rooted art architects and even emigrants who emigrated to the US mm -hmm. because they don't like Germany anymore in the 30s mm -hmm. and they put them together and they build up this yeah just like a cinema mm -hmm. uh, um, feature and then they tried out mm -hmm. and then they brought in the bombers mm -hmm. to Germany the documents are research papers written by Bruno during the Second World War they reveal that his wartime work was crucial to the RAF bombing campaign against German cities. Back in London, I reread my father's papers. I'm a historian. It's my job to look into the archives of other people's lives. But when I saw these documents, they provoked more than professional curiosity. The theory of primary fire raising with small incendiary bombs by Dr. R. B. Fisher and Dr. J. Bronowski. I was completely taken aback by them. They were about how to drop bombs from planes in what uh, array, from what height, uh, with what scatter. Standardized casualty rates per ton of blast bombs. And for the angles of strike considered, the masking of the zone of vulnerability by the site one, the mean area of the individual fire divisions into which the building. The possibility of starting firestorms by bombardment, the damage to civilian housing as well as to factories and installations, and ultimately the annihilation of the enemy. 
probabilities of events of the nature of these types of spread of fire were clearly dependent, allowing for overhitting 75 tons of large blast bombs per square mile would then give 1,500 killed, 2,000 seriously injured, and 4,000. So, one of uh, my uh, well-known uh, men is he has been a psych psychologist, mm -hmm. a doctor of psychology. Mm -hmm. He said and. Uh, find it very fitting this word he said Dresden was the greatest men fire fire where wood were the men were the people the greatest men fire ever the, the people were the yes, wood the, the wood. people were the, the, the wood a, a very very hard but very fitting expression for yes, that that's true yes and the logs uh, they were the live logs that it's absolutely true that the uh, with Dresden uh, started uh, the civilian bombing moral. Mm. The moral moral bombing. Mm. Because why you do this? Mm. Because it's moral. I saw against the, the, the worst enemy, the worst. You know, I have a cynic, some kind of cynic question. If it was moral bombing, whom's moral it was? Mm. That is the question. And who made, who, to whom was it offered? It's a sacrificial burnt offering is a holocaust. Mm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. at the time, when I made the speech in Dresden, there was this gasometer, it was called, mm. where they had a 365 degree um, uh -huh. show, and they had Dresden, mm. but they had no bodies. It was just the ruins. Mm -hmm. And they called it moral bombing because there were no there were no people. <laughs> it was moral bombing. It was only against buildings, you see. Mm -hmm. The concept is it didn't harm any people, it just harmed the buildings. <laughs> no. You see? And it's that's not like this. And I saw, uh, I saw uh, some of those uh, horrible pictures. S men, children sticking in the streets mm -hmm. or Melted, the melted. feet melted. Yeah, because melted it was together, a fire. Dried mm -hmm. out, yeah, because of the heatness f f to a package like 80 centimeters or a meter. Mm -hmm. uh, horrible pictures, yeah. Sell them shown. The Sell them shown. The same in Hiroshima. Yes. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yes. Mm -hmm. There, yeah, sometimes we see in reports. Uh, what the following generations were suffering from mis mm. misbuilding, mis mm. miscreated, and so mm. on. But if you see uh, um, pictures of Hiroshima, you also seldom see people. Mm. It's clever. Yeah? That's yeah, the people. cunning. The cunning is it all happened to buildings. Yeah. It didn't happen to people. No, it didn't no. happen to civilians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it just you know. Yeah, we, we just shattering. Our aim has been the buildings and. Yeah, mm. they died. Mm. Yeah, they were dying <laughs> some people. This was collateral damage. No, but they weren't. Yeah. No, no. no. they are targeted, not yes. collateral. The target was that was the plan, and mm. they wrote it down. That plan, mm. and afterwards they say moral bombing. This is war Civil population. And then what now. in Palestine yeah. when they put this the, with the the phosphorus, the same phosphorus that mm -hmm. Winston Churchill threw on the German civilians, mm -hmm. that same kind of phosphorus was thrown on the Gazans in Palestine. And th they yes, say that when you are burnt by the, the uh, phosphorus, you cannot get it out. You yeah. cannot stop, stop no. it out. And you shouldn't pour, pour water or something like that, it would be even worse than phosphorus. Yeah. So it is a holocaust, it is a burning alive of, 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 of people. people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really true that uh, started with the Second World, because in the First World uh, there were uh, many, many ill people between, uh, among the, the soldiers, mm -hmm. but not uh, uh, cities of uh, no. of, uh, of uh, I think population, in, no? In, no. In, in mm. most of the wars uh, before, even to in medieval <coughs> times, Civilian were killed and robbed as, uh, sorry to say that, as mm. collateral. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, the damage. price, they were the prize, but, but not the I'm, reason. I'm convinced about that this uh, moral bombing mm. um, to, to so many German cities 
was not no collateral damage. It was no, planned. No, no, no. Yes. We proved it. It was a war crime. We it was a, one it. of the most greatest war crimes ever. Uh, it's admitted. The, the British archive mm. tells us yes. that this was their plan. Yeah. It's not an afterthought. It was the, the, the policy. To break the souls, to break the, uh, the, the spirit yeah. of, the, of the soldiers. Uh, looking back to seeing what is going on in, in, in their own country, they said, OK, stop that war. That was the plan. The British air chiefs argued that the desired result of reducing the German industrial production would be more readily achieved if the homes of the workers in the factories were destroyed, if the workers were kept busy arranging for the burial of their wives and children, output might reasonably be expected to fall. It didn't work. Mm. All the Braves, not only German, so and so many Europeans mm -hmm. fought on the, on the side of mm. the German forces, mm. even, even British people. Mm. Uh, mm. And even people from the Netherlands, from Belgium, so flame, mm. uh, French people, mm. uh, Spanish people, and even from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Muslims, mm -hmm. 800, were mm -hmm. set it in Hamburg, mm -hmm. and uh, even Palestinians. Mm -hmm. uh, I got none of that out of, the, uh, out of a trial against a juvenile Palestinian boy who made something stupid in, mm -hmm. uh, in a museum uh, of a concentration camp, mm -hmm. and uh, his mother showed me picture, pictures of her father mm -hmm. in German uniform. Mm -hmm. So I get it wrong that uh, even Palestinians fought on the German side <laughs> against communism, mm -hmm. especially that was their main uh, interest to, to, to make a front against the Soviet <laughs> Union <laughs> with their plan, as we all know, since uh, lately, since uh, uh, Soros Buch. Hitler, mm -hmm. the icebreaker, mm -hmm. um, Hitler in Stalin's calculation, this book, mm -hmm. he said, yes, there has been the plan to go to Lis Lis Lisbon, even, to bring out uh, the world uh, communistic revolution. And many of uh, European men, 10,000, 100,000, fought on the German side because they, they saw this danger coming up to uh, Europe, <laughs> yeah. uh, in all, and... Uh, it is a great thing for us German, for me as a young German, to know that not only Nazis fought a war no, no, in Europe, but so, so many people from other countries um, recognizing what will go on if the communistic mm. wave will swap all over the, the continents. Yes, mm. they all were Waffen SS. Leon de Grel from Wallonia, yeah. I'm very yeah. thankful um, because maybe many of them saved the life of my father, who was able to fight with uh, merely 16 years old uh, in the south of Berlin uh, mm. against the bombers, mm. yeah, to, mm. to save the big batteries mm. against the, mm. the smaller mm. uh, aeroplanes who tried to find the flak. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. maybe uh, even European volunteers uh, saved the life of my uh, father-in-law who came from Silesia yeah. on the way, yeah. fleeing from the, from the Red Army. And my father-in-law uh, has been uh, shortly before the 13th of February 45 came. He left uh, Dresden on the 10th or 11th February. He stuck on the mm. uh, stuck on the uh, main station. Mm. Was bombed too, mm. and get off two three days before the bombing started. Mm. And mm. this is this is mm. fate. Mm. And maybe mm. even European soldiers did their duty in order to save the life of my father and my father-in-law. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have that mm -hmm. fantastic wife now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is fate. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm so grateful and so thankful that so many Europeans fought on the German side. And they did not fought for 
Hitler or the regime or the Third Reich, they fought for an or idea of a free of Europe. Europe. That's it. Mm. That's it. I spoke so many mm. survivors, uh, Netherlands, Danish people, uh, uh, English, even English, in Spain. I've been over to Spain where three or four from the Blue Division uh, mm. could, could uh, speak to them. It was a great experience to do that. And uh, we honor them in my family. They all were honored uh, for the whole of my life. My father worked it out and said, don't forget the last group fighting uh, at the Rice Camp Chancellery in Berlin was the French Legion. From the group Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Never forget that son's daughter. They fought French. for us. They fought for our lives in the center of the war in Berlin. So it so was the Europe. It was the idea of Europe. Uh, and Absolutely. I'm very grateful once again, I have to say mm. that. On the other hand side, mm. I would wish that even in France, Great Britain, the Netherlands, in Belgium, maybe in Denmark too, there should be monuments for the German army protecting them from the Soviet terror. But they aren't. They are not. Maybe in the future. That's how <laughs> maybe in the future. So, it's a great pleasure from you and you, Joe, um, to, to hear to my words. I not often have the possibility to speak about Germany as a whole, to speak about World War II, yeah, from the point of a mm. after war bomb mm. yeah, man. So I'm yeah, very yeah. grateful to sit here. Well, we are very, very, um, very grateful to have you <coughs> sit here. And also it's the sort of thing that would have come out during my trial, which would have been a revelation to yes. people. <laughs> yes. Because it would have hit the headlines. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you know. Uh, so wh whether whether ultimately I would have won or lost in personal terms, what would have been revealed over that period of time mm -hmm. from one court to another court to the higher court and to the higher court and more historic truths coming out, mm -hmm. it would have been a victory in any case. Yeah, even, as it will even if you would have been sentenced yes, in the future. Yes, forget about that. The, the point the is that it would have We succeeded. do not risk that. <laughs> the, the disturbance of the public order <laughs> by that uh, trial uh, that would have been looked upon from the whole of the world, from interest. Many, that many, that many media right. people uh, recognize, oh, a former model and so on, <laughs> and the lady and, yeah. That is, uh, they come to the light like yeah. night flies to. Oh, there is the people's a, yeah, tattoos. Yeah. 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 Maybe they said yeah. better, better, to, to better to quit it, better to lay it down. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. I cannot look in, in their heads, but I guess so it means to do that it. we will not, we, 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 we will go now to, to, mm -hmm. to Dresden. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> The case, the case will, 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 yeah, will be laid down. We, we, we have won. Yes. We have made them so frightened <laughs> that they will not convict. <laughs> More or less. I don't know exactly, but that's what I guess. I wanted to, to see the rest of them. They were afraid about the public and they were, they were afraid about the contents of the trial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Her biography, British citizenship, in front of a German law at Dresden, where she has been in Dresden, fantastic. and were forced, were forced by a German lady, mm. uh, by the words, how, how dare you to be here mm. as a member of the Victory Nation. Yeah. And this, then she came in front of the court. Look at that mixture. <laughs> Look at that scene. A bit yeah. strange. <laughs> Yeah, good say bizarre. 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 <laughs> and wife and wife of a former prisoner of war. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm, and mm. and the Getting matrimonial home was the was the home of the Prime Minister, the war Prime the, Minister of the Who the, the bad system of Germany. Well yes, yes. and also and get the highest order even. And, yes. <laughs> and von Ribbentrop rented that home mm -hmm. 
that our <laughs> matrimonial <laughs> home was rented by von Ribbentrop. I mean, there were so many historical, mm. interesting connections mm. for people to take an interest in the trial itself mm. because yes. of the ingredients, you see. It would be vivid history. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it would have been performed there mm -hmm. for three times mm -hmm. on two, three, four, five, six days in court. In different and courts, mm -hmm. higher courts. And uh, Lady Michelle uh, would have been able to speak about her, speak about the case, uh, speak about the development, how she came to those words and what do they really mean. Mm. Oh my goodness, I think mm. that would have been not, not very not, safe, not, re yeah. not very good, not <laughs> very well uh, to, to let her speak mm -hmm. in her mother language, not in German. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. so pretty <laughs> very perfect. I'm a little cynical. It's, it's a victory second class. 